This video is going to take the ideas that we learned in the previous video about discrete Dirac notation, and we're going to apply that to develop a concept of using matrices as operators. All right, so let's define some uh, operator, which we call O. I've got kind of a script O here. This operator is going to act on ket vector A, and the result is going to be a new vector B. So we define just some operator as something that transforms a vector into another vector. So this is sort of the matrix analog of what we talk about in the quantum chemistry playlist as an operator uh, as something that transforms a function into another function. Here the functions are sort of represented as vectors and the operators will eventually be represented as matrices. All right, so if we have our operator acting on uh, some basis vector, ket i, and that equals a sum from j equals 1 to n, sum over all n of our dimensions. We can have basically how much does, does operator O transform basis vector i into all of the other basis vectors j. So i is a basis vector, j is all of the other basis vectors in this whatever n-dimensional space we're talking about. Okay, so we can represent the effect of O on any given basis vector as a sum over its coefficient of how much it's transformed into any of the other basis vectors. So if we can do this, uh, this gives us the values of i into all the other j. And we can do this for any given uh, basis vector, seeing how all of them transform into each other. So what this gives us is essentially the elements of a matrix which we use to represent this operator. So this O, or O double bar, is going to be the n by n matrix representation of the operator O. And its elements are going to be these O, I, J, telling us how much each of these basis vectors get transformed into others due to the effects of this operator. Okay, so what is the following type of, well, we haven't represented this yet, but we have a bra vector I, operator O, ket vector J. We're going to see what this ends up being. So we have the ket vector, or sorry, we have bra vector, bra basis vector I, then we have the sum from j equals 1 to n, oij acting on j, because this is uh, pretty much what we were looking at before. So then we have <clears throat> the operator acting on the ket vector, the individual results there being this type of label. All right, we have this, this is equal to a sum from j equals 1 to n. Sometimes I just skip the j explicit j equals 1 to n when it's clear that we're summing over all n values of j. All right, so this oij is just a constant. It's the same every time for the same pairs of, of basis vectors. So I can pull that out, and then we just have this bra basis vector i forming a bra ket with this ket basis vector j. So we have sum over all j, oij, of bracket ij. We know from previous videos that these basis vectors form an orthonormal basis set. So that means that if i and j are equal, you get a 1. They're normalized. If i and j are different, you get a 0. They're orthogonal to one another. So this is a sum from overall j of oij times delta ij. So in each case, oij stays the same, but the only, val the only case in which you get a non-zero value, uh, there's, one, there's one element in the sum where you get a 1, all the rest are 0. So the result of this sum is oij. It's the matrix, it's the matrix element of O for our, represent our representation of this operator in this basis set. And we get this element by computing this following uh, bracket type of notation. So this, this bracket with a matrix or an operator in the middle, I typically refer to this as a, as a matrix element uh, type thing. So we have 
the matrix elements of our of our operator and represented in this basis set we would get by determining this type of uh, matrix operator this type of matrix element uh, operation okay so all of these are for basis vectors so what if instead <clears throat> we want to see the result of um, of some given uh, bra vector a to, uh, and its result with the operator O acting on ket vector B. So before we were looking at uh, pretty much just unit vectors, basis vectors that form an orthonormal basis set. But in general, we want to know the effect of, of the operator acting on any vector and the resulting uh, bra ket with that vector result. Okay, so in that case, we could do a sum from i equals 1 to n, and this would be uh, bra vector a would be complex conjugate of element a i times uh, bra basis vector i. Then we have the operator O acting on ket vector b can be represented as a sum from j equals 1 to n, sum over all of our n dimensions of b sub j of coefficient j of vector b multiplied by uh, ket basis vector j. So we can factor out both of the sums here. We have a sum from i equals 1 to n, sum j equals 1 to n of a star i, complex conjugate of i -th coefficient of a, times b sub j, the j -th coefficient of ket vector b. And then once again, we have just the matrix element left over of I, O, J that we computed earlier over here. So if we want to know the result of O acting on uh, ket vector B and the result and the resulting vector in a bra ket, this matrix element we can get as being equal to a sum from I equals 1 to N, sum J equals 1 to N, A star I, O, I, J times B sub J. So all we need to know are the coefficients of A, the coefficients of B, and the matrix elements of O in order to get the result of this operator acting on B and that result overlapping with A. This is a type of quantity that shows up over and over and over in quantum mechanics, computational chemistry, and the types of electronic structure theory, which we'll be studying later in this computational chemistry playlist. Okay, so you might have noticed from earlier videos that if we have the bracket AB from the direct notation video, that's like a column vector or the ad Hermitian adjoint of A times vector B, which I can represent here in either this boldface notation or my underline notation. So this matrix element AOB is equal to a similar thing where we have the matrix O uh, sandwiched in the middle. This is kind of the overlap of A and B, and this is the overlap of A with the result of the operator O acting on B. So there we have a row vector times a matrix acting on our column vector, giving us the matrix element of the effect of O operating on B overlapping with A.